Hey everybody, it's Ron, and today I'm going to be talking about the Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. For those who don't know, the Baron is the main antagonist in Frank Herbert's legendary sci-fi novel, Dune. He is portrayed as a highly intelligent, ruthless leader and planetary governor of House Harkonnen. He is also one of my favorite villains in any media. He is the full embodiment of evil and a very interesting character because of how vile he is, both physically and mentally. Here are my top 5 moments from the books involving the sadistic Baron Harkonnen. This first moment comes from the Doom prequel novel titled House Atreides, written by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. In the novel, the Baron employs a Rechizian scientist named Chauvin, who has developed the early stages of what would later be called the No Ship in the Dune universe. No Ships are ships that are completely invisible to the human eye. After murdering the scientist who created the technology, the Baron uses it to fire on Tleilaxu's ships and make it seem as though Duke Leto and House Atreides were the ones who committed the act. To the Baron, this seemed like the perfect way to send the Duke away for good, but with the help of the Bene Gesserit and Shaddam Carino, the Duke was eventually found not guilty. The Baron's main mistake was killing the scientist too soon because the Harkonnens didn't know how to replicate the technology, and the ship itself eventually ended up in the hands of the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood, after the Baron's nephew, Raban, failed to exact revenge on them. One of the Baron Harkonnen's strengths as a character is his use of blackmail, and in the original Dune novel, the soup doctor known as Dr. Yui is forced to betray House Atreides because the Baron has his wife Wana held captive. Dr. Yui ends up letting the Harkonnen troops and the Sardaukar into Arrakeen and gives the Baron Duke Leto himself. The Baron ends up having his mentat, Piter, murder Dr. Yui even though he held up his side of the bargain, and this shows the Baron's ruthlessness, with a great quote after Piter mentions that Yui did in fact deliver on his promise to give them the Duke. The Baron explains that he never could bring himself to trust a traitor, even a traitor he created. Dr. Yui knew that the Baron had most likely killed his wife already, but uses Duke Leto to project a poison out of a fake tooth when he's in close proximity to the Baron to get revenge, which the Baron just barely escapes. This is another moment from the original novel, and even though it's a very small section, it really shows the cruelty of the Baron. The Baron's nephew Fade Ratha attempts to kill the Baron by putting a poison needle in the thigh of a slave boy. When the Baron realizes this, he sends for Fade and has an interesting conversation with him and makes a bargain that Fade will not attempt to kill him again and in return, the Baron will let him rule when he is gone. Fade thinks he's in the clear, but his actions have consequences, and the Baron orders Fade to go to the slave quarters and kill every woman in the pleasure wing. It's a brutal punishment, and comes as a shock at the end of this section of the book. This moment comes from the third book in the original Dune saga by Frank Herbert called Children of Dune. Paul's sister Alia is in charge of Arakeen, and since she's a preborn, she's tortured by many ancestral memories, but one relative worms his way to the forefront of her thoughts, and that is of course the Baron. The Baron offers to help her with her troubles if she does certain things for him in return, like letting him take control of her body for pleasure with some of her male acquaintances. And this ends up totally warping Alia's mind and ruining her relationship with the Duncan Idaho Gola. It's a tragic outcome for Alia and it shows that even in the afterlife, the Baron is still a very dangerous man.
Number one on my list comes from the House Atreides prequel book, once again. And this is also a very significant moment because it's the moment that eventually turns the Baron into the grotesque figure that we know from the first novel. In this novel, the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood is trying to create the Kwisatz Haderach. A Kwisatz Haderach would be a male Bene Gesserit who would have access to the memories of both his male and female ancestors, as well as an ability to bridge space and time with prescient ability. Gaius Helen Mohiam realizes that in order to create this being, she needs to breed with the Baron Harkonnen to jumpstart this process. She ends up getting the Baron to agree because the Sisterhood knows about his illegal spice hordes and threatens to tell the Emperor if he does not comply. After the first attempt goes wrong, Helen Mahiam requests another meeting with the Baron to once again impregnate her, and this time the Baron has a plan to get revenge, with the help of Piter, by stunning her and taking advantage of her without her being able to use the voice or any other Bene Gesserit techniques to fight back. It's a really hard part of the book to read, but it's necessary in showing how evil the Baron is, and it also gives Helen Mahiam the opportunity to release a disease from her own body and transmit it to the Baron that will slowly deteriorate his health over time, turning him into the repulsive man we read about in the original Dune. So those are my top five sadistic Baron Harkonnen moments that make him a great villain in my opinion. Let me know if you have a different list or if I forgot anything significant in the comments below. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content and thanks for watching. Hey everyone, it's Ron here with a quick announcement. When I started this channel, I was reading and reviewing the Dune books and other sci-fi related material. And most of you might not know that I'm also a musician. So when I was reading these sci-fi books, I started to get inspired and decided to make my own soundtrack to use for my videos. And now I'm excited to tell you all about the first volume in the Ron Reviews original soundtrack collection. This album includes the first 17 tracks featured on my channel, and it's available now exclusively on Bandcamp. Be sure to check the description of this video for the link to the album. Thanks so much for the support so far. I know I'm just starting out, but I hope you're having as much fun as I am. So check out the original soundtrack volume one on Bandcamp. This music is great if you want something moody and atmospheric to listen to while you're reading some science fiction. I think you're going to love it. Thanks.